What's up, it's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi and here's my mushroom farm. So this is my DIY cool bot. It has about the capacity for 400 pounds of fresh mushrooms, which is almost two weeks of production for me at full capacity. I've got it set at 38 degrees Fahrenheit. So it fluctuates between 36 and 40. As you can tell, it's empty right now at the end of the season, but in peak season, I'll fill this up weekly and then use it as a placeholder to break down mushrooms for the market or for chefs. One of the favorite things that I like about my CoolBot is that I have it on the Wi-Fi edition so I can get real-time readings and alerts on my cell phone. I think that's really important, especially during peak season. You don't ever want your cold storage to go down. Another cool feature that I anticipated, but I haven't used it yet, is I made this on a, a trailer that so it could be towed if I want to extend my markets out to the mountains, or I can travel to a bunch of different restaurants. All I have to do is hook this up to my truck, and then I can carry all those mushrooms and make sure that they stay cold. I'm standing in the flex space of my farm. So it's about 250 square feet that I'll use for various purposes. Right now it's holding all of my substrate that I've got wrapped up for the winter. So one of the most challenging parts about growing in the mountains is pest control. And I figure the best way to protect my substrate is to wrap it up, keep it off the ground and use as much containment as possible to prevent any rodents from getting into my valuable substrate. So I've also got a wood chipper over here in the corner that I'm gonna be doing some springtime projects. I really want to expand my outdoor cultivation and by utilizing the natural resources and this wood chipper, I should be able to develop some really large beds. I also have all of my farmer's market gear broken down into these uh, shelves right here. So I'll typically have both of these coolers and all my side coolers that I take with me to market. But during the off season, I'll just put them in this flex space. During the peak season, I call it my flex space because I'll set up my tables here to do my packaging before we head out to the market, or I'll use it just to store my tents in between market weeks. I've also got some extra grow equipment in the back here. So I'll talk about my grow rooms, but essentially this is all the equipment that I need for backup foggers, uh, backup, uh, backup environmental sensors, and some air conditioning in case it gets a little too hot in the summer. So this is my fruiting area. I'm at my fruiting room one. So I've got one of four fruiting tents that are operable for fruiting my mushrooms for production. So this first tent I have set up for cordyceps that I usually run in the fall. Um, I have a tent within a tent to kind of mitigate temperature swings. I'm also going to utilize this tent, the fruiting room one for tissue culture, for plant tissue culture production. So I'm going to be working with some mycorrhizal mushrooms in the near future. I have some trees that are inoculated with truffles and this setup is ideal for running cordyceps in jars and doing small test batches for breeding as well as plant tissue culture. All right, so I'm over here in my grow tent number two. So one of the reasons why I love using grow tents is you can flex them throughout different times of the year for different purposes. Right now, this is serving as my incubation tent for the last batches of the year, as well as some monotub projects that I'm working on. So I'm planning to breed out a few alternatives of the bag production for monotubs, and it doubles as a perfect environment for both. So I've got 
the incubation and monotubs set at around 72 degrees, which is ideal for both. In peak season, I can easily convert this to a fruiting chamber, which can hold about 400 pounds of substrate at a time. And it has the capability to become a fully functional fruiting chamber when I need it for my full production. This is my fruiting tent number three. So this one's currently set up for production. I'm, I've got a bunch of shiitake, oyster, and lion's mane that are fruiting out in there right now. I have my DIY humidifier, keeping it at about 85% humidity right now. The exhaust is running on the four inch tube on the ground and it's continuously exhausting to keep the CO2 below 1000 ppm. Now this could fit two full barrels, two full Bubba barrels of production, which is about 400 pounds of substrate. So I like to divide it out into two separate carts and that way I can quickly pull them out, clean the grow room and get ready for the next batch. So I'm here in my fruiting room number one. So right now I have it set up for sterilization. This is currently the sterilization tent. I can fit up to 400 pounds of substrate, which is about a week of production in here, as well as these uh, CADCO burners that I have set up for my grain production. So at peak season, I can convert this into another fruiting room. And then that way I stagger each room per week of the month. So if I'm doing this outside of the tent, I like to have my doors open and I'll move my barrels to the exit. That way it doesn't steam up the whole building, but I like to have it contained in the tent because with an exhaust on here, it keeps all the humidity manageable for the rest of the building. So I'll run these barrels for about eight hours to pasteurize my substrate and then they take about 15 hours to cool off and then I can wheel them over to my flow hood to unload them for production. I also have a bunch of presto cookers on hand so that one day a week I can do all of my spawn production and prep them all and that way I just load them up and it makes it really easy to do my production. So this is the less glamorous but important part of the farm, which is the water reservoir and cleaning area. So I store a lot of my products that I need for production here, like the grow bags, um, a bunch of cleaning supplies. I've got my Petra um, sprayer that I use to clean up the grow rooms and my shop vac. And then right here is my water system. So I'm working on adding some filtration and some additional pumps to pressurize my grow more. Um, but right now everything is gravity fed and I go through about 200 gallons per month uh, just off of my foggers. So it's very efficient system and it's one of my pride and joys here being in the mountains where water is scarce. So I'm standing in my favorite part of my mushroom farm, which is my lab. So this is my pride and joy on the farm. I've got this 48 inch air science flow hood that has been with me since the very beginning. So I do all of my culture work here. Then I've got another space set up in the corner for all of my auger production, my liquid culture production. I've got some pH testing supplies, uh, some heat sealers and all of my media bottles below to do any culture work that I'm gonna be doing for breeding. I really like the vertical flow hood for this because it protects my workspace as opposed to the other flow hood that I have for my production. So these are my media bottles that I use for my working liquid cultures. Got a bunch of slants that are, I'm prepared for doing my annual culture inventory turnover. So I poured a, a bunch of these slants for long-term storage and I also have my working liquid cultures that I'm gonna be utilizing to do some breeding over the winter. So then over here, this is my working lab. So I have all of my cultures in production here in my incubator. And then I use my horizontal flow hood fan filter unit 
to do all of my bulk inoculations and my green spawn. That way I can keep my culture flow hood extra clean. And this has less head space to worry about. So it's easier to inoculate my substrates and it's uh, much more ergonomical as opposed to working with cultures in the, the vertical flow hood. One thing that I've been struggling with with my working cultures is them evaporating too quickly. So I found a really cool uh, little swivel thing for a refrigerator storage that I put inside my incubator and it makes it really nice to grab my cultures as well as it lifted those plates off the bottom that um, prevents evaporation from happening so quickly. So lastly, this is my big DIY incubator for all my mother cultures and my working cultures as well. So I plan to do a BSL-2 lab someday, but this is a really good solution in the meantime. Um, I found this ozonator that helps uh, mitigate contamination. So you could run these for two hours and it should clear up any spores or molds or bacteria in this area and really help protect the cultures from contamination. So this is the beginning stages of all of my production. And I like to organize this like a library where I have all my cultures organized so that as I do my yearly maintenance, I can start from a healthy mother culture and work it out through production. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that tour of my mushroom farm. If you're looking for more information about starting your own mushroom farm or just growing mushrooms in general, check out my ebook, Growing Gourmet Mushrooms for Market. It's listed on my Etsy, along with over 30 other gourmet liquid cultures that we ship worldwide. Until next time, much love.